Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Architecture at University of Dundee. My name is Cameron Wilson. I run the Year One course in Architecture, and I also look after admissions for uh, for the Architecture Department. So, if, if you're in the process of filling in UCAS forms just now, uh, the UCAS forms all go to our central admissions department, and then those that are applying to architecture, they all come across to myself, and I, with, with colleagues, will read through all of the applications uh, over the, the, coming, the coming weeks. Uh, what, what I'm going to do today is, is really just talk reasonably briefly about uh, the applications process, and also a little bit about the, the course um, uh, for a Master of Architecture. That should take around about 20 minutes or so. And then after that, I've got a few volunteers from uh, the, the Year One student group who will take you on a, a, a brief tour through the, the studios, like you see the, the main studios, the CAD suites, crit space, our workshop, and so on. That will also take about 20 minutes um, or thereabouts. And they'll have you back down to, to this level, um, certainly well before 3 o'clock, because I, I know usually people are heading on to other things after this. Um, so. University of Dundee Architecture is one of my students messing around when he should really be working. Uh, we were part of uh, the School of Environment uh, nowadays. We were uh, with environmental science, geography, town and regional planning. Uh, all the subjects have been in existence in the university for quite a number of years, uh, but recently uh, the university felt that it was more appropriate for these subjects to be grouped together within a school, mainly for synergies relating to, to research. We do have a little bit of shared teaching across uh, architecture and, and town regional planning. Uh, if you're at the process of, uh, at the point of um, filling in your UCAS form, I suspect some of this you'll already be familiar with, but just to, to recap, uh, architecture, it's a Master of Architecture we offer here at Dundee, five years full-time study. Most people coming in to study architecture are looking to qualify as an architect. In order to do that, you've got your five years full-time study plus an additional two years in practice. Uh, most of our, our students will break the, that period of time up into studying for three years full-time with us. They'll then go out into practice, usually in an architect's office, for a year and then return to what we call year four, complete year four and five, and then go out once again to, uh, to finish off their the practical training in, pra um, in, in practice. Um, total of seven years sounds like a long time, but actually it goes by incredibly quickly. Uh, the Master of Architecture nowadays is actually recognised as a postgraduate qualification, uh, but it still comes under the, the undergraduate um, funding. Um, again, I suspect uh, people coming along with events like today will have already researched this. Uh, if you're doing a hire, if you're doing Scottish hires, it's a minimum of two A's and two B's that we look for. Uh, if you're doing GCAS, GCE A levels, it's three B passes as a minimum. Uh, anyone doing the international baccalaureate, 32 points. There are a whole raft of other qualifications from other parts of the world that uh, we also accept. The, um, the only subject we, we insist on is, is actually English. Uh, at, at higher level, we're looking for a minimum of B pass. If you're doing GCSEs, then it's uh, uh, again we're looking for a, a B pass there. Uh, HNCs, HNDs, uh, we also uh, consider. Uh, the interview with the folio. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Uh, so the UCAS applications, if if you're doing that for this this coming year, uh, they start to to come through to me around about some November December time. Uh, the 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 things that we obviously we look at on the UCAS forms are well qualifications. Uh, most people applying to us are either have achieved or will be uh, looking to achieve the, the minimum grades. Uh, so we do. We do check the qualifications, but then for, for me, the personal statement is, is a really important thing. Uh, it sounds like stating the obvious, I suppose, but it is personal. I know there's lots of websites nowadays that, that give you these sort of templates and um, standard formats for filling in personal statements. Do make your statement personal and pertinent to yourself. Uh, you want to make clear on, on that why it is you're thinking of studying architecture. 
uh, maybe what sort of research you've been doing in independently, whether it's reading books or reading magazines or visiting places or going to exhibitions. If you're fortunate enough to have had some uh, practice experience, whether it's for a, a morning, an afternoon, a week, a month, make sure you pop that in your review card statement. People seem to forget to, to do some of these sort of things sometimes. So we're, we're looking for a personal statement to, in some way, evidence your interest in, in the subject of architecture. Uh, and then there's a, a reference from a school or college. Uh, schools and colleges are pretty good at doing academic references uh, for, for us. Uh, occasionally I will see a reference coming in from a, a fast food chain manager saying, Jimmy is a very lovely person and works very hard. Uh, I'm sure people are lovely. But actually the personal statement is an academic statement that we're looking for. Um, as, a, as I say, most schools and colleges are aware of what, what we're looking for there. Uh, we interview everybody we're interested in, uh, in considering for a, for a place. We get around about sort of 500 or so applications and we've got around about 60, 70 uh, places on the course. Uh, it sounds like going from a big number to a small number. Uh, but within the UCAS form, there's five choices that people have. Uh, we know there's a wide variety of reasons as to why people select one university over another. Uh, it does somehow magically work its way down to the, the appropriate level for us. Uh, we, we, we interview everybody individually. Uh, it's either meeting with myself uh, or one of my colleagues that, that teach in the early years. Uh, Around about 20 minutes seems, again, like it might be quite a long time. It goes by in an instant. Uh, the portfolio that you bring along, uh, maximum 15 items in the portfolio. We, we, we really don't need to see everything you've done since the age of 5 to, to 18. <laughs> it's just it's, it's what you consider to be your best work. Uh, and, and usually the good folios, uh, what we're saying is we see a range of media within it. Uh, the, the portfolio needs to be uh, something you can carry in. It's a paper-based folio. Uh, don't bring along laptops. Uh, you can be assured that the laptop will die at the time that you need to, to work in an interview. Uh, don't bring along USBs, because we might be in a room where there isn't a computer. So just bring along a paper, uh, paper folio, whether it's A1 or something that's reduced down. That's, that's up to yourselves. Uh, if, you, if you do 3D work, if it's sculpture, you don't need to chuck that bronze sculpture up the stairs to, to see us. Just a, a nice photograph, pop that in your folio. That's ample for, for our requirements. Uh, the, yeah, the interview, we, we try and make it as relaxed as it possibly can be. Uh, you're you're, you're going to be meeting with people that are used to interviewing uh, young people. Um, we, we're aware that it's often an interview in our universities, it's sometimes the first time that that individual's been at an interview. Uh, so we're trying to keep it reasonably relaxed. It's not an inquisition. We're not trying to trick you, trick you at all or trip you up. We're really just looking to try and get to know you a little bit better in the space of 20 minutes and get to know why it is you're interested in architecture and how you've been investigating that. So if you've written in your UCAS form that you read a particular book or you've been to a certain place, we might talk a little bit about that. But given that you filled in your UCAS application in October, November time, and we might not be seeing you till January, February, there might have been other things in that intervening time that you've, you've, you've been off to, um, to, to visit or to see. Uh, so we might talk about that. But obviously it is a, it is a competitive interview. There, there's many other people that are also looking to uh, get that, uh, obtain that place at, at the university. Uh, we, on the interview day, um, it's either in the morning or it's an afternoon session. Usually people from coming from the local area will invite along for a morning session. Uh, if you're travelling from further afield, it tends to be for the afternoon. We can change the time if it doesn't suit. Uh, it doesn't affect any decisions that we make. If, if you get an, uh, an invite to come along to an interview on a particular day and you want to change it, that's okay. Just let us know. Um, you'll, you'll have a tour around the, the department with some students. And I try my best to make sure that there's, there is a response back to, um, to the individual within two or three weeks of uh, following the interview. It just goes through the UCAS system. Um, portfolios, yes, people, people often ask me, what should I put in a portfolio? Uh, 
the, yeah, yeah, the, the brief response is, it's what you consider to be your best work. It's, um, uh, if, if you're doing an academic subject, academic course in, in art or fine art or graph com, uh, that can form part of your portfolio, but there might be other things that you do independently or that you reckon, actually, I'm, I'm really proud of this, this piece of work. Put that into your portfolio. Very occasionally I'll, I'll, I'll meet uh, people who will come along and they'll present, they'll unfold the two sheets that they've submitted for their SQA hire, and I'll say, thank you very much, that's lovely. They'll explain that they've got an A pass in it. Uh, but I, I'm not here to, to grade the SQA hire again. There's other people better qualified than me to do that. I'm, I'm looking for something slightly different in, in a portfolio. So by all means, include your, your hire work if that's what you're doing. But there will be other, other things that will be in there as well that, that we would be interested in seeing. So if you happen to be interested in drawing buildings, uh, by all means, pop that in if, you, if you've been off to uh, an interesting place and got lots of lovely sketches and drawings of etchings, um, pop that in your portfolio. We don't expect everybody to go out and do this kind of thing, um, and we don't see it all the time in the portfolios, and it isn't absolutely essential. But if you enjoy doing that, certainly put that in. We do see people that will have portfolios that will contain life drawing, perhaps. Uh, it might be uh, more abstract work that they're, that they're doing, expressive work, it might be landscape. Uh, quite a few people might uh, seem to have a, an interest in photography as a, as a hobby. Uh, they're maybe not doing it as an academic course at school or at college, but it's something that they enjoy doing. By all means, pop that into your portfolio. Uh, sketchbooks, uh, if you've got a big fat sketchbook that's full of really interesting stuff, pop that in your portfolio. We won't have time to go through every single page, but what I tend to do is I fairly quickly will leaf through it and we might sort of stop and a, a part in your portfolio and have a conversation about that put, uh, uh, in, in your sketchbook. Um, Sketchbooks are great for being able to kind of look inside somebody's head a little bit and see how it is they think. Because uh, the portfolio, apart from demonstrating how you draw or the, type, the techniques that you have and, and communicating uh, uh, your, your work, it's also about creative thinking. And that's a slightly harder thing to, to get across in a short space of time with a folio, but sometimes uh, sketchbooks are handy for starting off that conversation. Uh, quite a few people nowadays, um, they, they may have done a little bit of uh, work experience in, in, in practice or may have uh, gone off to a, uh, an architecture workshop, uh, whether it's at a school or a college or um, university. Uh, if, if, you've got, if you've got 2D working plans and sections, you can include that, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't just turn up with only that in a portfolio. We're looking to see a range of media. Uh, but if you've got something that, um, that you did when you were in, in an office, by all means, pop in a a page or so of, of, of that work and we'll maybe have a conversation about it. Um, so the teaching environment, uh, you'll get a little bit of an idea as to the nature of the studios in, in, a, in a short while when you're, when you're upstairs. Uh, we've got a sort of fairly large expanse of, of main studio that our years one through to four share. It means that the students can see what one another are doing across the years. Uh, you have the older students passing on their words of wisdom to, uh, to the younger students from time to time. Sometimes that's helpful, sometimes it's not. Um, we, we have, as I mentioned earlier, we have about 65, 70 students in, in, in the year, each of the years, which means that um, we, we break the, the year group up into smaller tutor groups. So you, you have a ded dedicated design tutor that you see um, each week, and they will have a, a group of around about 12 to 14 students. Uh, that's always something really interesting to ask when you're visiting various schools of architecture as to how they, how they operate in their, in their programme. This will just scroll through a series of, of, of images over the next um, few minutes. Um, year one, we go off to the beach on the first day, take all the second year students as well as the first year students and ask them to create a place that didn't previously exist. The reason for talking about place at the beginning of uh, the, the course is that it, it allows students to um, discuss things that perhaps they weren't aware that they knew uh, to, to open out their, their, their perceptions of what architecture might be. It might be investigating a place as mundane as a bus stop or a, a park bench somewhere and talking about um, why they think that particular place is in, interesting or intriguing. Uh, other kinds of things that we get the, the students to, to do is uh, we, we break the, student, the, 
student group up into uh, teams of three students. They will be given an exemplar house from late 20th, early 21st century, and I'll ask them to tear it apart with build models of plasticine or plaster and find a way to communicate why that building is the way it is. They, um, they essentially tear it apart. They also do drawing exercises to understand how to draw on scale. Uh, I think I'll just uh, stop on that one just for a second. Go back, back. Right. right. Um, this, this was a, a student a few years ago who happened to have done a, a, another course before coming in to study with us. So he had a degree in some other subject. He, he was pretty decent on, on CAD before he came in. We don't expect people to have any CAD skills at all at, at the beginning of year one. Uh, if you have some of those skills, great. If you don't, fine. We, we don't expect people to, um, to know how to operate AutoCAD. Uh, we'll, we'll teach CADs and, and other drawing skills from week one of year one. But what we are looking for is, is people are happy to sketch and draw and investigate be willing to tackle new things, whether it's building curious models, um, and be open to exploring different ideas about architecture. The, the first sort of major design project students do in year one is for a, we call it a habitat project, which is to design a, a house for three fictitious characters. Uh, they, they're given a site, uh, usually located somewhere near water, not too far from Dundee, uh, and they're given a period of time to uh, individually produce a, a particular uh, solution to that uh, task. Uh, during the, that period of time, they'll be building models, they'll be experimenting with Photoshop. A lot of these images are produced by students who have never tackled any of these things previously. So by the time we get to Christmas time, they encountered a, a major project into semester two. They asked themselves daft questions. Um, we're not able to build snowmen every year, but when we can, we do. Uh, and then into semester two, just at that point where students are thinking, right, I think I've got my head around this, this design work, this, this architecture subject. We give them a new challenge, we give them different things to contend with, different techniques in order to, um, in order to understand how to design. And, and so the challenge um, continues once again. Uh, this is a research retreat project we've been running for a couple of years. So students are... By the, this is this is work from the end of the, the academic year. So by the end of the year, they're becoming more proficient in uh, modelling their ideas, whether it's building a, a physical model, um, whether it's communicating uh, their ideas through plans and sections and so on. We might do a little structures exercise. You get given a piece of paper, you have to slice it, fold it, see how it can stand up, and then interpret that, and it becomes a, a pavilion building. Uh, to be located at, uh, at uh, some place um, nearby. So it's, but well, yes, I, I don't, I don't know what an easy course is. Or they all end up really good friends at the end of first year. I don't know what an easy course is, um, but I know architecture doesn't come under that heading. Um, year two uh, is where the the students start to investigate how things are made, how things are constructed. Uh, so they might do a little exercise in the timber structure. Uh, so they actually will build things. It's, it becomes a little bit more hands-on in, in year two. Also in year two, we start to investigate the city a bit more. Uh, we might do an intervention project where we're given a brief that's probably too, too large for the existing building. You have to break out of that and negotiate with the, with the city. Things are starting to become a bit more challenging in terms of the, the detail of investigation, in terms of the technological resolution. So start to investigate other things during the course of year two. Uh, most of the design projects, really good friends at the end of year two as well, most of the design projects in the early years run for a number of weeks. By the time they get to year three, the design project is running for, they don't all wear rubber suits in year three. Um, <laughs> by the time they get to year three, the design projects are, are as you probably expect, a bit more challenging bit more wide-ranging. Uh, usually there, there's a presence within a city that has an element of a, a civic presence, I suppose. Uh, and the, the project will run more or less the entire academic year for, for design projects. I suppose in addition to design projects, there's also there's lectures and workshops and seminars and so on that, that complement the design studio. Uh, the, the, the work that I'm showing here is predominantly work that 
that we do in the, in the studio. So in year three, um, by the time you get to, to that stage, more complex questions, that are more challenging. We're becoming a bit more aware of how to deal with things technologically. Uh, and also because at the end of year three, before year four, most students are going out into practice, we're looking to make sure that they have a portfolio that's going to be really of, of use to them when they're going to interview. When they come back into year four, uh, they, they might be investigating a, a part of a city that's become forgotten or um, in, in need of regeneration. Students might work as a little team for a while to look at a, maybe a, a forgotten canal or a former docks area and we'll produce a master plan for that location and then we'll split up individually and we'll be designing buildings that are appropriate to, to that place, whether it's library buildings or, or uh, ballet schools or, or whatever. I mean, the, all, all the, the design projects, they kind of they change and evolve over a period of um, period of time. And again, year four project lasts for most of the academic year. Year five, I know, seems like a long way off from, from this point, but just mention it because year five is a, a, a slightly different animal to the rest of the school. Year five is split up into a series of units. Each of the units, as titles suggest, have an interest in a particular aspect of architecture. Students will then align themselves with that, um, that group, that unit for, uh, for their, their final year and will be developing their own question that they want to investigate within that, that uh, theme. Uh, other things that we do, um, there's, there's certainly trips uh, at, at different points in the year. The past few years, um, second year, have been going off to to Holland for a week on a study trip. Um, uh, third year have been going to Krakow in Poland and fourth year uh, have been going usually for a week or so to Berlin. Uh, the trips uh, kind of change from, from time to time. Uh, we've been running these for a period of time now. Year five actually, it depends on the nature of the, the unit they're in. It might be Switzerland, it might be France, it might be somewhere else. Uh, uh, I'll just go back to that previous one, right. Um, and then the, the other thing that we've got that we run is uh, Erasmus, a, a student exchange. And we've got links with universities in Germany, France, Poland, and also Australia. Uh, so in semester two of year two, students, if they wish, can take part in these exchanges. So they'll go off and study in another, another university for, for a semester. We're always quite careful as to who we let go of. We, we, we need to make sure that the, the students are going to make the most of it, that they're academically um, strong and independent uh, individuals. Uh, but we've been seeing uh, quite a number of people going off each and every year in, in, in year two for the sort of January through or February through to, to June period of time to these different places. Uh, and then ADAS is the student-run organisation. Uh, they organise, apart from organising Cayleys, um, they also organise a, a whole series of interesting lectures by um, uh, architects from around Europe. And just to kind of finish off, um, one of the one of the things that uh, people from here, from architecture, will be having to deal with um, by 2020, uh, the UN reckon 20% of the population in the globe will be living in slums. Uh, over the past century, we've seen the global population increase to around about 7 billion in the past year or so. Uh, by 2050, they reckon 9 billion. Uh, I think that's recently been revised upward by the UN. That period of time, 2012 to 2050, uh, well, that's probably going to be your careers um, that you've got that challenge to contend with. Uh, this is one of our students uh, working in the North, North Malaysian uh, rainforest, sort of fairly, fairly hands-on sort of chap, Billy, from a couple of years ago. Um, people sometimes, if they're interested in that kind of thing, can find themselves working in remote places and be very hands-on. Uh, other people will find themselves working in multinational companies in, in large cities. Uh, and just to say, just to fin finish off, we also have an end of year exhibition in, in May in 2013. You're all welcome to come along to that. And I would encourage anyone thinking of studying architecture to make uh, visits to, to schools uh, dotted around the country. Uh, they usually start around about May, June. Our website always has a bit more information on that uh, nearer the time, the stuff you've seen previously. And I suspect you're already aware of the, the links in the, the, the upper half of that shot. Um, that's the professional bodies um, website, architecture.com. It's the education and career section that you're look, looking for. 
becoming an architect. There's a few interesting and informative bits of information there. That's my email address at the bottom there. Uh, if you've got a question in a week's time, a month's time, or even a year's time, drop me an email. I'm usually reasonably quick at getting back to people. I try my best to, get, to respond to people swiftly. Um, always happy to hear from people. Uh, I think what I'll do just now is I'll, I'll, I'll take everyone out, outside to meet up with the students. They'll take you on a tour and bring you back to the, the space just out, outside the door. And I'll, I'll be happy to answer any questions at that time that you might have.